fear, the feeling of agitation and anxiety caused by the presence or imminence of danger. But it does have a critical purpose, to save our lives, and I'm going to show you how. Ooh. Tell you what, Dallas wouldn't do this. Today, I've agreed to get up close and personal with a snake, all in the name of science. I must be bonkers. First, I'm being kitted out with sensors on my body to measure my blood pressure, my heart rate and my breathing. And here comes the moment of truth. Oh, lordy lord, the things you do for television. Meet Ra, a 10 foot long oh. Burmese python weighing in at 15 oh, kilos. That's unbelievable. They don't attack people, but when, Did when you you're they're nervous. I'm trying my best to control my fear of snakes, but immediately my breathing gets faster and my heart rate and blood pressure shoot right up. My heart is actually beating through my chest. It's unbelievable. And I'm also starting to sweat. I'm ready to get him off me now, Sue. But it's these physical symptoms that could actually save my life. <laughs> Completely freaky. Well, what you just witnessed there is my body's slightly embarrassing response to fear, and it's called a fight-or-flight response. When we come across something dangerous or frightening, it kicks into action, and adrenaline is released into our system. And that prepares us to either run for our lives or fight for survival. So fear can be life-saving, but what if you're not aware of the danger? Now, seeing as Ra the Python was literally plonked on me, there was little chance of my missing him. But in the wild, it can be a lot trickier to spot a snake because they're usually extremely well camouflaged. There's not much point in this great fight and flight response if I've trodden on a snake by mistake. What I really need is an advance warning system to get my body in gear quickly before it's too late. Now, the really interesting bit here is that scientists think they found just that, located in the very depths of our brains. Now, to find out more, I've come to meet a neuroscientist who's going to help me recreate a very clever little experiment that was first carried out by a certain Professor Oman in Sweden. The experiment is simple. I lie in an MRI scanner and they show me some pictures. All right, we're going to show you various pictures on the screen, so your job is just to lie still and watch them while the scanner measures your brain activity, OK? OK. When the experiment begins, a series of random images are flashed before my eyes. Now, I've got to admit, this doesn't feel scary at all, but there is a lot more going on than I realise. OK, all finished. I'll come and get you out. I am dying to get out of here, lad. Come on, now. Okay, you can sit up. Yay! Well done. Oh. Finally, all is about to be revealed. You thought you were seeing just some random jumbled pictures, but yeah. in reality, what you were really seeing were these pictures of snakes. Oh, wow, OK. Yeah, but we showed them so quickly that your conscious brain couldn't work out what you were seeing. At a thirtieth of a second, it really was blink and you'll miss it. But here are some of the images slowed down. Whoa, I definitely didn't see any of those scary looking fellas. Interestingly, your brain did. Really? How can it, you tell? Let me show you a picture of your brain. OK. These parts of the brain here are the amygdala. That's the fear centre of the brain, okay. and it controls the fight or flight response. There's one on the left, one on the right, and yeah. they're kind of sort of in the middle of your brain. OK, so whenever anything scary happens to you, that fires up. Yeah, so this kind of controls your fear response. And these red dots show that your amygdala was activated when you saw snakes. OK, but, Jeff, I didn't see those snakes, so how come it's firing up? Well, if we look at your structural scan... Yeah. We've got two routes to vision. We've got a conscious route um, where information enters the eyes, gets passed along the optic nerve, and ends up at the very back of the brain, the primary visual cortex. And if it's something scary, then it'll go to the amygdala, right? Exactly. OK. Um, and that's a very slow route, but it's, it's the conscious world that we live in. It's what we can see. But there's another route. There's okay. an unconscious route. 
and this is really, really fast. So information comes in the eye, it's passed along the optic nerve to this part of the brain here, called the superior colliculus. And this is an evolutionary ancient part of the brain, it's really, really old. But the good thing is it can pass information directly through to the amygdala, and this route is purely unconscious, but very fast. This lightning-quick unconscious response to snakes probably evolved around 65 million years ago, when they were one of our ancestors' most dangerous predators. And amazingly, we may still be using it in today's world, helping us to react to and avoid danger before we see it. If I wait for consciousness to catch up, it might just be too late. <laughs>